um, Lucia Anelich, who is from Anelich Consulting. Prof, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for making time for us. So what exactly is a genophosphate pesticide? And I heard during the press briefing um, the minister saying that it, it is normally used in, um, in the agricultural sector. Good morning, uh, Aldrin. And yes, absolutely correct. It is organophosphates are registered pesticides or a group of pesticides in South Africa. And they are registered under Act 36 uh, with the Department of Agriculture. And in the registration process, there is an enormous amount of toxicological data and all sorts of other information that the registrar requires in order to uh, register a pesticide in South Africa. So it's a perfectly legal pesticide, but of course it comes with certain uh, provisors, including the fact that it is actually for agricultural use. And so all the labeling and all the warnings and the usage is all for agricultural use uh, at, at farm level. Okay, so, so at a farm level, what would an, again, a phosphide pesticide do, which in a human being becomes more dangerous? Well, to be, to be frank, most of these uh, pesticides are toxic because of the fact that they are designed and developed to actually control some or other pest. And in generally speaking, now not only organophosphates, but you will find certain pesticides will control fungi on plants so that plants and crops are not uh, destroyed by these agents, uh, pests, insects. Um, all sorts of other pro uh, issues related to crop production. So organophosphates are just one class of pesticides that do that. Okay. And then once um, human beings come into contact with it, whether um, by inhaling um, or ingesting, what happens to the system? And also speaking about that, um, Prof, uh, are you able to tell us why it is more susceptible when it comes to children compared to adults? Because with this particular case, it's children that bought snacks from a local spaza shop, but we haven't really heard of um, adults that have succumbed to this poison. Yes, and of course, that's the big question, is how did it actually get into the food that the children consumed? And in fact, was it snacks? So all of these questions still have to be resolved by the Department of Health the inspectors and of course the police. So these pesticides are not designed for use at home. They are completely illegal in terms of usage at home. So they should never have been sold or made available in any way to uh, domestic for domestic use in the informal settlements. Uh, and they do affect a body terribly badly in the sense that they do bind certain areas of the nervous system with the result that the nervous system also starts to shut down. And once that happens, there is basically a point of no return. Sure. And coming to your second question about children, you, because these pesticides and any chemical for that matter is determined, its toxicity is determined per kilogram body weight. So when a child, a small child of 30, 35 kilograms ingests a certain amount of poison, and an adult of 80 kilograms, for example, ingests a, the same amount of poison, the child is going to be far more severely affected than the adult in this case. The adult would need more to have the same effect as a smaller dosage would have on a child. Yeah, and also seeing how easily available it is, and it is actually wi widely used um, in, in, some, in, so in some townships. Um, what, what would your advice then be to, to parents um, specifically as well? Um, and if they do come into, in, in, into contact with, with, with um, and, I, and I guess they wouldn't know whether it is organophosphate or no, but, but they would know, would see the symptoms. Um, once they start seeing those particular symptoms, what do they do? Once they see those symptoms, they have to get those children or those individuals to a hospital as fast as possible, because it's only at the hospital that treatment can be administered. And the doctors uh, will know what to treat them with. Atropine is the, uh, the substance or the treatment of choice, 
But again, in certain cases, especially with organophosphates, atropine might actually not be effective because they are so toxic. And then in terms of looking out for these pesticides, the, both aldicarb and the, the specific organophosphate we are talking about here um, come in granular form. Mm. So you can see these little granules. They are different colors. The uh, turbufos is a light pale and sometimes light gray to brown color, whereas aldicarb is a more round granule and it's a much darker granule. And if one sees any child or any individual handling these or trying to sell them to those individuals, they must be stopped immediately. Yeah, um, in one of the pieces that you have written, you have spoken about um, some preventative measures as well and looking at how artificial intelligence could help. Can you just expand a little bit on that? I'm not sure that I wrote that piece on artificial intelligence, so I'm not sure what you're referring to. Oh, okay. It, it, oh, no, no. I'm, uh, my apologies. It's actually Arte Bana uh, who, who, who wrote that piece. But what they were saying here is that more um, artificial intelligence can predict potential outbreaks and contamination incidents by analyzing vast uh, data sets beyond human capacity. But with that said, also, what sort of interventions should we be seeing um, to avoid incidents of this nature? Well, as far as artificial intelligence is concerned, yes, absolutely, that is correct, especially at a laboratory level where you have a lot of data that is generated. And AI can definitely help to consolidate that data and make sense of that data faster than what a human being can do. So we do, we do predict that in future AI is going to help us tremendously with all this uh, large amount of data that we generate on a daily basis. But in terms of prevention in this particular issue with these organophosphates and aldicarb for that matter, we mustn't take our eye off aldicarb because we know it's available in the townships. We know it is out there and people are selling it and it is also highly toxic. And the difference is that aldicarb is banned in South Africa. It is not permitted to be sold or imported or used in South Africa. And so whilst we have here an issue with organophosphate, we mustn't take our eye off the ball that aldicarb is also floating around out there quite easily available. Yeah. Dr. Lucia, thank you so much for your time. Do, uh, Dr. Lucia um, Analich is a microbiologist um, speaking to us here about the, the discovery of this organophosphate, um, a pesticide which has been linked to the deaths of the six children.